Hi, in this video around Nexus Dashboard Insights 6.0, I want to introduce you uh, to a new feature called Firmware Update Analysis. So what's the problem we're trying to solve here? So when you think about an ACI fabric, it's made up of discrete components of leaves and spines and apics, uh, although they do work together as a, as a holistic fabric. And when you think about going into an upgrade, this can sometimes be a detailed process. And of course, everyone wants to avoid or minimize any kind of traffic disruption, but also avoid any issues during the upgrade that would you know, force us to back out or introduce other unexpected problems. So the use case here is I'm going to use the feature called firmware update analysis. And the nice thing about this feature is you do a pre-upgrade check, which identifies any potential issues before you go into an upgrade, giving you a chance to correct them, etc. Then you go into an upgrade, everything comes out at the other end, but we also can do a post upgrade check to make sure that we haven't introduced any new problems or any new bugs or unexpected behavior. So we can come out of the upgrade with a very confident feeling that everything went as planned. With that in mind, let's switch over to a live deployment of Nexus Dashboard Insights running against a real ACI fabric going through an upgrade. Okay, so here I am logged into my Nexus Dashboard Insights. And if you go to the left menu bar down here towards the bottom, you can see a category called Change Management. And inside that folder, we see that's where we find the firmware upgrade analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and click on there. And right now you can see I don't have any analysis, uh, pre-analysis that I can refer to at the moment. So I need to uh, create a new one. So clicking the button for new analysis, it's going to ask me some, some basic information. So I'm going to upgrade uh, a site that I have called Barcelona. And you can see that it recognizes the sites that it's monitoring. And so I'll select the appropriate one and go ahead and click next. The next thing it does is it checks for any possible updates uh, uh, for firmware for Barcelona. And you can see here, I've only got one choice here. So 523E, it's a recommended release. If I wanted to see information about the release notes, I could click here and it would open up the window and show me information directly about the release notes. I'm going to skip that uh, and just select the version of firmware that I want to upgrade Barcelona to. The next thing here is we need to select the firmware that we want to install on the nodes themselves. The previous choice was for the APIC. And again, just like before, we can see the release notes of any versions of firmware that we might want to upgrade to. In this case, I only have one and I'll go ahead and select it. The additional thing that we have to do at this step is actually select the nodes that we actually want to upgrade. In this case, I want to do all of them. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and select all. So I'm going to go ahead and click add. You can see here down at the bottom, um, there are some potential you know, anomaly scores and some conditions here that I might want to look at. But of course, the analysis will help me you know, shed some light on those things. We can see the models, the types. We can see the serial numbers and their existing firmwares. So it looks like I'm upgrading from 521G to 523E here. So that's really it for setting up the new analysis. I'll go ahead and click Save. And that takes me back to the original update analysis landing page. And you can see I have a, a new pre-check in progress right now for all of the things that I just selected. So this is you know going to take a few minutes. And after it's done, we'll come back and see what the results were of the pre-change analysis, identify and fix any problems, and then go through an upgrade. OK, we can see that the firmware update analysis pre-check has completed. And this only took a couple of minutes here for, for my site Barcelona. Let's double click in and see what it found out. So double clicking takes you to the landing page, which again gives you general information about the parameters that you selected for this particular upgrade. In the lower half of the window, we can see two different uh, selected paths, one for nodes, which would be all of my leaves and spines, and another one for controllers, which would be any Apex that I have. Where all the information is, is down here in the analysis detail. So let's go ahead and click on the button, which takes us to the landing page, in this case for the nodes. And again, we can see information about that. But the real you know, useful part is, is here in the second tab called pre-update analysis. We can see that it went through a series of validation checks to see, are there going to be any problems or issues if you were to go into an upgrade with the fabric in its current state. So we can see we passed five checks and, and failed two. So let's actually go in and see what's going on. So uh, through the series of validations here, it, it, it checks certain things. And 
uh, one of the issues it found was uh, the fact that I don't have redundant spines. Now, this is my lab. This is not a production environment. So this is expected. But, you know, if this was a production environment and you saw this error, you would definitely want to correct it. Because once we upgrade the spine, we're effectively going to interrupt the flow of traffic uh, across the fabric. And, and I don't think anybody wants that in a real live environment. Uh, other checks, let's see here. Uh, it's It looks like we've also found a singly connected host. Now, from a configuration standpoint, that's a valid configuration. But what it's doing is intelligently warning you, saying, hey, if you have a pairs of leaves, uh, normally you would deploy those in VPC pairs, but we found a singly connected host or an endpoint when you upgrade that leaf, that host is going to lose connectivity for some number of minutes, and you might not be aware of that. So let me tell you ahead of time, perhaps you can you know, adjust it and move it into a VPC configuration so that when you do an upgrade, traffic will still continue to flow for some sort of critical app that, that you really care about. One of the other nice things that I like here is it gives us a potential uh, release defects, right? So I can click on this or I can scroll down here uh, to the bottom and this is basically saying when you move to this particular release based on the hardware platforms that you have there might be some some bugs uh, uh some unresolved bugs in the new version of code and of course there's uh, a brief description right on the page but if you want to click on the bug and break out into a new window which gives you more details uh, potential workarounds things like that everything is hot linked here it's looking like all of the, the bugs that I have here are pretty minor, so I'm not too worried about it. And these are bugs that you might also see in the release notes for a uh, ver version of firmware for the unresolved uh, sorts of issues. And then you can see, this, you know, is this going to impact me or does this make sense uh, for me to proceed? I'm going to click done on this one, and then I'm going to click down on the controllers version and see uh, things specific to my APIC. So clicking on the analysis details, going into pre-update analysis, you get the same kind of thing. In the case of APIC, we actually did uh, 15 different validation checks, and we failed one of them. So again, you can, you can go through and you can see all of the tests that were done identifying any that might be an issue. It looks like, you know, it's identifying I've only got one BGP route reflector. And again, once I reboot that route reflector, it will impact traffic. So you might want to correct that. And again, as I said earlier, this is my lab, so it's expected. But in production, this is something that, yeah, you would definitely want to address. Uh, same kind of thing here. I think this is the same list of, of potential release defects. We can click here and look at the, de the defects uh, for this particular uh, version of code. W what I'm going to do now is I am going to actually upgrade my fabric, right? I'm going to go into an upgrade. This is going to take me a couple of hours, you know, in my lab. Uh, I'm going to come back and after the upgrade, then I'll do the post upgrade analysis and we'll see that, you know, how it came out. Everything's okay if there were any potential issues that I need to be aware of. Okay, so here we are coming back after a short break, and I've actually gone through in my APIC and upgraded, you know, all of the nodes, the leaves, the spines, the APICs, etc. And now we're coming back to Nexus Dashboard Insights to kick off the post upgrade analysis. So I'm going to double click back into my uh, my pre analysis here, and you can see here that if I click on, let's say, the nodes, it it is aware that I've actually updated these three nodes. So it's telling me now three of three are actually updated and of course the same is true if I click on the apex in which case in my lab I only have one so now really the trick is this is I'm going to click on post update delta analysis and you can see that we haven't run one yet so the first thing that we need to do is say rerun the analysis so that we can compare it to what we saw in the pre upgrade analysis and uh, share some information about everything that's happened since making sure that everything's okay highlighting areas that might need some attention. So I'm gonna click on rerun analysis. Now, it tells you right here, this will take several minutes. So I'm gonna pause the video and when this analysis is done, we'll come back and we'll see what we see. Okay, here we are with the view of the post update analysis being completed. And it shows us a number of interesting things here. The first thing it shows us here is some health data. So it's giving us a, a colorful view with these circles of the circle on the left being the before and the circle on the right being the after upgrade. And it lists them by severity from critical all the way down through informational. So here we can actually get a very quick visual glance to see that, well, even after we upgraded, we actually introduced 
um, a critical fault. In fact, we also introduced a major fault as well. Everything else looks the same, uh, more or less, as before and, and after. If we scroll down, we can see health data by resource. It looks like um, we started out with um, some tenants here, and before we had two unhealthy tenants, and then after upgrade, we had um, three unhealthy tenants. Now, what I didn't tell you is I purposefully introduced some, some issues uh, during the upgrade process, just to make some some examples here as well, and I'll and I'll show you all of that. But the point that I want to make here is we can very quickly tell at a high level that either something's gone right or something's gone wrong. But more importantly, what are those things that may that may have gone wrong? So if I scroll down to the very bottom, you can see okay, I've got a series of of critical faults here. They all look sort of a bit repetitive. I can click on this little sort of icon here, and I have a choice to say. Do I want to look at the before snapshot only, the after snapshot only, both of them consolidated? So if I say, well, show me what happened after the upgrade, show me, you know, what were the, the faults? And if you remember, I had introduced a critical fault and it looks like a bridge domain was created that somehow should be programmed on a leaf, but it's not. And it has to do with the with a subnet route. Now I can double click on this and get more information because um, this is a, a type of anomaly. You can also see that a bridge domain here doesn't have an association to a VRF, so making that bridge domain pretty much unusable. And I would probably bet these two things are probably related. And it looks like an app EPG was created or exists that doesn't have a, a contract. Now, again, I, I can double click on these anomalies and dig a little bit deeper. And that's, you know, maybe a video for another time to look at anomalies deeper. But here I can see certain things are different after the upgrade. Now, like I said, I went in and manually created these faults so that they would show up here so that I could I could make the point uh, about looking at the before and after. Now, let me scroll back up because this is just the view of the health data. I want to look at the policy delta, right? Now, the policy delta tells me, did anything change in terms of configuration during the course of this upgrade? Were things added? Were things modified? Or perhaps things were deleted? Now, I can look here and I can actually see through color coding that this was ye yellow or orange kind of means modified, blue means created, and of course red means something was deleted. And in fact, you can see here, it looks like a subnet uh, here was actually deleted, uh, you know, at some point during this upgrade or after this upgrade, but before the analysis. Now, the next question becomes, well, what changed, who changed it, when did they change it? These are all natural questions. And so if you look at the at the far right column, you can look at the at the audit log, and again, through color coding and through icons, you can see that it looks like admin account deleted certain things, etc. Now, what I did was I created an account and I and I called it junior admin. So I'm gonna go ahead and filter and show only the things that junior admin did. And you can see that uh, junior admin created some things. Uh, looks like we created a, a, a VMM mapping to an EPG. That's probably that contract issue. Um, I can look and see that it looks like uh, an EPG called Unplanned EPG was created. I can click on more information. I can see details about that. I can see the uh, the uh, distinguished name of the object. It's actually in a tenant called Initech and an EPG called Unplanned EPG. I can continue to scroll down and see some other things that uh, were created by the account junior admin. It's time stamped. Looks like I created a subnet here. So the thing is, I can gather quickly information about who's doing what, what changes were made, when they were changed, because maybe you know we weren't supposed to make these changes during the upgrade window, just do the upgrade. But here I have lots of contextual and visual representation of things that changed from before the upgrade to after the upgrade, and I need to go maybe address them. and. Uh, you know, after you go through an upgrade cycle or a maintenance window, you always kind of go back and check, are things working? And this really, really quickly helps give you what I call situational awareness to what's going on in, in the state of your fabric. Let's continue to one last thing here, and I can look at the third tab called Operational Delta. I think if I do it under the, the switches themselves, so let me go to the post update analysis. Yeah, here's what I wanted to show is in terms of configuration resources, it looks like, oh, it looks here on, on these two leaves, an EPG was created, you know, that was the junior admin thing. Uh, uh, so there's a mismatch between the before and, and the after. 
I can look at things like physical interfaces, VPC interfaces, uh, protocols. I mean, I don't have it here because it's my lab and I don't have these things um, like actually happening in my lab after the upgrade because only show mismatch will only show things that yeah actually went wrong or changed in a negative way uh, between the upgrade. But here you can gather even more information about the operational state of your fabric after uh, after the upgrade has actually happened. And I think that is all I wanted to show you here for this particular feature. Uh, I want to say thanks for watching the video and I will continue to add more use case videos as we go forward showing off all of the cool things that you can do with Nexus Dashboard Insights 6.0.